Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are talking about MGHS in Australia. This is a 1.5 turbo petrol model, not a plug-in hybrid. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about 10-ish things, maybe nine things that I believe justify the purchase of this car in Australia, in spite of very honestly pointed out also 10-ish topics that I kind of labeled in the previous video as, in my opinion, rather stupid or inconvenient. In this particular video, however, we are going to sing it a little bit of praises and justifiable praises, uh, given all the <laughs> criticism that I've already expressed. Why would I still buy the car? Okay, point number one, completely hard to argue, completely obvious value for money. So this car, MG HS Essence, which is the top of the range, leather seats, all electronics, MG Pilot, automatic transmission, obviously, uh, sunroof, everything imaginable, the top of the range car. I got it here in Australia at the end of 2021 for 36,000 Australian dollars. It is not pounds, it is not American dollars, it is just Australian dollars. By my research, which I've done obviously before buying the car, similarly equipped vehicles would i could probably get my hands on new from about forty-five thousand australian up so this car is roughly ten thousand dollars cheaper to own to to buy not to own big big difference to buy in australia at least at the moment of recording of this video so value for money you're getting a real leather seats it's not vinyl you get all sorts of other features that we'll talk about today and you get all of that for 36 grand that's pretty pretty damn good again notwithstanding the points that i've made in the previous video including the fact that the car only takes unleaded fuel 95 up which is on the expensive side of the spectrum if you, to, to run the car to own the car okay so that is kind of notwithstanding that i still think that this is a pretty good value for money purchase now point number two Warranty and included roadside assistance if you are continuing to service the car with MG. It's a seven-year warranty with the local dealer, with the local service center that is not far, happens to be not far for me here in Sydney where I live. And my first initial experience with them was okay. I wouldn't say it was mind-blowing, but it was definitely good. I owned a lot of cars in the past. I definitely have nothing to complain about so far, but no, I have not owned the car for long enough. And that's one of the reasons why I probably will be checking in with my audience here if it grows and reporting to you further on what the car is like after six months, after a year of ownership and so on and so forth. But so far, I do think that seven year warranty capped service pricing included roadside assist is very, very good. Definitely worth value for money. Again, good thing. Point number three is subjective, as a lot of things are uh, when you review cars or when you watch car reviews and somebody expresses their opinion on this, is design and perception of luxury. So, again, within this price range, this car looks like maybe a poor man's Porsche Cayenne or even Tesla if you start thinking about all the extra slightly underbaked electronics such as the MG Pilot and all of the automated kind of systems. So I do think that I do like the design. I like the curviness of it. I like this British look that kind of reminds you of classic MG sports cars and kind of makes you feel without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt. And I heard someone else's opinion on this, which aligns with mine. It makes you feel like you're driving a much, much more expensive car than you bought. That is a plus. Let's just be honest with ourselves. It is, it is a plus. The seats are comfortable. Steering wheel feels luxurious and comfortable the back seats are comfortable so there is definitely this car is built for comfort rather than performance so if you are after a performance car no this is not your probably product but if you are after your own or family comfort especially within city environment we are not talking about four-wheel driving we're not talking about all-wheel driving the car doesn't have those capabilities but if you're honest with yourself as to what you're buying it for, I think the overall design and luxury definitely satisfy at least my needs. And they will probably satisfy needs of 90% of city living, city dwelling Joes and Janes out there. Point number four, deserving its own point, is the sunroof. It's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. It's massive. It's not one of those hole in a roof 
things it's it opens the whole the, the like to the whole size of the roof it is absolutely gorgeous and magnificent it lets in so much light and i know that in australia the skin cancer capital of the world it probably is a lot less relevant but my recommendation to you and it's not one of the points but it's kind of an addition to it is absolutely don't be stingy the car is already cheap and invest into paying for the window tinting you need window tinting absolutely which also tints the sunroof you need a tinted sunroof in australia you don't need just the sunroof because that's too much sun exposure sunroof opens partially sunroof opens fully i use it especially not on a particularly super hot sun scorching day but it's it's gorgeous it, it's gorgeous makes me feel both it makes the car feel more airy and it it makes the car and general experience of driving it feel more luxurious that you may or may not be able to afford trying to squeeze into anywhere remotely the same money bracket trying to look for some other car that's about it point number five keyless entry and button start rather than the key start of the car awesome quality of life features maybe you've been driving something that had already these kind of features i have not so for me the keyless entry where the key is just in your pocket and you simply come up to the car and you press the button on the door with your finger and you open the car and lock the car the same way is just awesome it's just awesome in addition to that the car uh, so the key uh, the remote key entry into the car also has a button to open the boot remotely it opens the boot remotely and it closes the boot remotely so that's all kind of in this big uh, luxury and quality of life package of the top of the range hs essence next point is with the foldable mirrors such a small thing you would think but it's worth mentioning absolutely the car folds mirrors when it stops and i do believe that there is somewhere here in one of these numerous buttons there is i think a button that allows you to fold the mirrors even just when you want to for example when you're trying to go through a particularly narrow entrance somewhere but the fact that mirrors are fairly big which makes them useful as you drive but the fact that they fold as you park the car somewhere in a tight spot of a car park busy car park and stuff it definitely gives you a little bit of a sense of sense of relief and sense of comfort that someone is not just gonna bash it with the with the shoulder or something else is not gonna happen to it so that that's a good thing i really like it now i have talked in the previous video about the underbaked infotainment and dashboard electronic dashboard kind of system some of the, these features are in my opinion a little bit less usable than i would like and underbaked watch that video for that but i have to particularly mention the 360 degree camera which i believe again is something on the hs essence rather than on every model of mg hs but this 360 degree camera is absolutely magnificent it's great first of all the quality is great we also own another mg mg zst in the family and it's a great car and i'll talk to you especially if you're interested about it separately but in zst in mg zst the camera and there is a 360 degree camera on the top of the range car as well but it's not as high quality and it's not as functional this thing the 360 degree camera especially when it turns on by itself as you're reversing it gives you the guiding lines as you reverse it switches into the view that you need to see such as the curb view and the view in the front kind of gives you a full view of the car as you're trying to park it i love it I honestly love it this is absolutely functional beautiful part of the luxury that i wanted to buy and i got for my money that is fantastic highly highly recommended just because of that it's awesome really makes your life so much easier to park so much easier to just get as close to the curb without scratching those rims and that kind of stuff it's really really good um then the next point is I personally like I said to you you are not don't lie to yourself that you're buying an MG for it to be a sports car this is not a sports car it's MG but it is built for comfort and it's built for for city comfort it's not built to blow you away with the performance of its engine it's not if you are expecting that you'll be disappointed so why expect that but having said that with that disclaimer out of the way I do believe that seemingly small 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine turbo is the keyword the power is reasonable is reasonable i've had the car with four with four people in the car 
going up the hill, driving from Sydney to Central Coast, up a long kind of hill on the highway at a top speed, and it's not like the car was struggling. No, it wasn't loaded up like a donkey, but at the same time, how often do you need to use a car like this as an absolutely like luggage moving massive car? But I think for a little family holiday, for whatever the 90% of your uses, I think you will not be disappointed with the power. So that's, it's pretty good. I think it's worth mentioning this. Final point that I'll mention to you today, why I think you should buy this car and what adds to its value, already unbeatable value in my opinion, is the MG Pilot. I know, especially if you've seen my previous video, I've criticized it for all the dings and bongs and warnings that are unnecessary and all that kind of stuff. But this is where, you know, it deserves certain level of justice. Like maybe I was a little unkind in the previous video as well because I tried to be as truthful as possible. I will mention that having an MG Pilot is a cool feature. It's a cool feature. If you are on a highway and if you don't mind keeping your hands on the steering wheel rather than taking your your hands off and then be warned to put, put the hands back on, which annoyed me in all honesty. If you want to drive in a semi-autopilot mode, so to speak, then MG Pilot is actually quite good. You enable it by pressing a button here on a lower stick. That is pretty easily explained to you by the dealer. I don't need to do it right here. It's not an MG Autopilot walkthrough. And then it's sort of, it's like an advanced version of cruise control. Forget about the lane, uh, lane leaving and lane entering warnings and stuff, which can become a little overwhelming. But what's cool about it is that it does do the poor man's Tesla kind of job. It turns the steering wheel by itself, yet it kind of insists on you having your, your hands on it. I already mentioned it. But it tries to maintain the distance from the previous car, from the, like it records the moment of when you enabled the pilot. So it sort of says, ah, okay, he probably wants me to stay that far from the, from the car in front. And it will maintain that distance pretty well under most conditions. And it will steer to stick to the lane. I have not, again, I have not driven the car long enough on the highway for you to, for, to tell you just exactly when it starts failing. But so far from what I've seen, you do need optical delineation of the, of the lanes. So the car is not smart enough to just subdivide the width of the road into lanes by itself. It needs to see the white lines in order to think whether you're in the lane or not, first of all. And secondly, I don't think it reacts really well to sharp turns, either either the actually the heels and dips or the actual turns. I think that's where the pilot could fail. That's where the, you cannot trust the pilot too much. But I think if you want to check on the kids while keeping your hands on the steering wheel and going relatively straight and relying on the pilot to maintain the distance and speed and stuff like that, to be that advanced version of cruise control, I think it will do that pretty well, by the way. And this is it. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. If you're tuning in to second video, thanks very much. Like this video if you liked it, if you found it a little bit useful. And don't be shy. Leave a comment if you have questions about MG, especially in Australia, owning it in Australia. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions to the best of my ability. I'm not a specialist. I'm just an owner. And I do want to produce more videos to talk to fellow MG owners and other people who are researching the brand in Australia more. But I do need your help with this. Subscribe to the channel to show your support. Like the video, preferably both of them, so that I see that there are people who want more of these videos so that I can bother producing more. Otherwise, how would I know if you want it? Thanks very much again. MG is a good car with some things that could be better, as described in the previous video, but plenty, plenty of points going for it. Thanks again. I'll talk to you another time. Bye for now.